Hi, I'm Dr. Brant Pedersen, and in this video we're going to give you four simple exercises that you can do at home without any fancy equipment, just stuff that you've got around the house, that can help you to stabilize your SI joints. Sacroiliac joints found here in the lower part of the back can be a common cause of lower back, pelvic region, and hip region pain, sometimes also leading to sciatica symptoms. Uh, we've got another video up here that really dives deep into what does that look like when someone has SI joint problems, what are common causes of it, goes through the anatomy. Uh, we're not going to re redo that here, but you can check out that video. In this video, though, we're gonna go over how to strengthen the muscles that stabilize those ligaments. You see muscles and ligaments, they kinda of work as partners. And when your ligaments aren't doing their job, they're too unstable, that SI joint can't find stability, the muscles are gonna really need to take over and, and, and do their part. And in this video, we're gonna go over uh, four exercises. The first two are gonna work what's called your gluteus medius muscle. And your gluteus medius muscle comes off your iliac crest here and attaches down into the top of your greater trochanter of your hip. When it contracts, it picks your leg up out to the side like this. And when someone has a weakness in that muscle, how it will present to them is they're going to, when they're standing, find that they kind of pop a hip out to the side, that they're not really comfortable just standing upright like this for a long time. So if they're in a line or hanging out talking to someone, they might notice that they pop their hip out to the side. Also when they're walking, they might notice that more. You see the gluteus medius's job is when I pick up a leg, uh, it keeps my pelvis level instead of letting it drop down this way. So if it's not firing good, when I pick a leg up and I've lost that support, my hip's gonna pop out. It's very important to finding stability and uh, healing those SI joints. The third exercise I'm gonna give you is gonna work two sets of muscles, two groups of muscles. The first one is your adductors, which come off of this region of your pelvis here, go down and attach onto the inside of your leg. And then the second one is gonna work your adductors, I'm sorry, your abductors, which come out here and help to bring the um, leg out. Both of those muscles, actually the gluteus medius involved as well, are giving you stability in this lateral plane. And a lot of us are weak in that, because we just don't exercise that way. We go to the gym and we work flexors and extensors, but we very rarely work our lateral stabilizers and just modern life doesn't give us a lot of chances to do that either. The last exercise is going to be one that's gonna work on the core. Uh, your core muscles attach in here to your iliac crest uh, and up into your ribs along your spine. So giving stability to that, that exercise is also gonna work your glute max, which is here. The glute max starts along your iliac crest and runs all the way down your sacrum. So by crossing that SI joint, having a glute, a gluteus maximus that is uh, functionally uh, firing and also strong helps to provide stability to your SI joints. First two are gonna be for your gluteus medius muscle. So for these, you're gonna lie on your side uh, you're going to want to take your bottom leg and bend it uh, at about a 90 degree angle at the knee. That will help you to stabilize on your side. And then you're going to lie down like this. You want your shoulder, your hip, your knee, and your ankle to all be in alignment. And you want your hips stacked one on top of another. And I'll explain why that's important in just a moment. We're going to take our leg straight, rotate our foot in, and then we're going to slowly bring our leg up and down like this. This one seems deceptively simple. Seems like, wow, this is going to not be any big deal. But if you are doing it correctly, you're going to notice that it is very quickly, within four or five reps, that you'll already be fatiguing out. Ways that people will cheat on this. They're not cheating because they mean to. They're cheating because it feels weak and the body's trying to figure out a way to do it, is that they will not have their hips stacked on top of another. They'll roll their hip back this way. When they do that, they start end up using their quad, which is much stronger than this gluteus medius muscle. 
Also, they might take and bring their leg out in front of them, doing it over here, or not internally rotate their leg so they're here doing this. If it feels too easy, it is probably that you're doing it wrong. Sometimes I'll have a person go and scoot back against a wall so that they know their hips are stacked on top of each other. I'll have people do a set of 10 of these, slowly going up as far as they can and coming down, just like this, everything in a line. And then I'll have them switch, roll over to the other side and do that same exercise. So bending at 90 degrees, so it gives you stability, hips stacked on top of each other, legs straight, rotated, hip rotated in, and then coming up and down, staying in that line, going up as far as they can and back down. Where you should feel this exercise is right in this area here. Uh, the next one, it actually does involve a little piece of equipment, but something you can pick up pretty, pretty reasonably. It's just a band. Um, you can take a banding material and tie it so that it fits good. But what we're going to do, uh, and I'll put a link down below where I get my bands. What we're going to do is have the band just a little bit above the knees. We're going to lie on our side again. And when we lie on our side, we're going to now take both legs, have them uh, one on top of the other, pelvis here. And what I'm going to do, these are called clams with band. With air band. So I'm going to take and slowly open up against that load and then slowly come back together. If you notice on the way back together that you're kind of a little ratchety or bouncy, that's a sign that this muscle is not strong and it needs to be worked. I have people do three sets of 10 of these, three sets on each side. So I'll do 10 on one side and then flip over and do 10 on the other side. The next exercise is an isometric exercise, meaning that the length of the muscle is not changing during the exercise. And this is a good entry level exercise if the other exercises that I'm giving you feel uh, too advanced. What we're going to do, I'm showing this with a foam roller. But you could certainly use this, a roll of paper towels in between. Um, and I'm showing this with a trochanteric belt because a lot of times when someone has SI joint instability issues, they will have a trochanteric belt, but you could certainly just use the belt that's around your waist, a piece of rope, anything like that. So what we're gonna do for this exercise is put something in between your legs so that they're about four to six inches apart. And then we're gonna take the belt and tighten that down around. Then what we're gonna do is with our hips up here at a 45 degree angle. The isometric exercise is to squeeze, in this case the foam roller, squeeze my hips together against it. That's working the adductor muscles, the, the groin or inner thigh muscles. I'm gonna do that for three seconds. And then I'm gonna do the opposite, extending out against the belt, working my abductor muscles for three seconds. This exercise helps to work those lateral stabilizer muscles that we talked about and is very important for getting uh, lasting stability at the SI joints. I'll usually have someone do three sets of 10 of this. In between the sets, they can just take and rest. Uh, with that exercise, sometimes people will notice a pop or a click that happens. Um, that shouldn't be painful. And it's, uh, something, it's the SI joints kind of readjusting, and that's fine. Uh, lastly, the exercise I'm going to show you is what's called a bird dog. And a bird dog uh, helps, it's a core exercise, but it also um, is helping you to understand how to move your hip separate from your low back and pelvis. So we're going to take and put our uh, knees underneath our hips, our hands underneath our shoulders, and then I'm going to brace my core, uh, keeping my spine in neutral. Bracing my core like someone was going to hit me and I'd, I'd be okay with that. 
And then what I'm going to do is slowly come out with my arm and my leg, keeping that core engaged, not arching in my low back, keeping my core engaged and not bringing my leg up too high. I'm going to hang out here for 10 seconds, balancing, keeping my core engaged. I say to my patients, pretend you had a glass of red wine here and you didn't want to spill it on your carpet. After 10 seconds, I'll have the patient come back in, doing that in a controlled fashion. Then we're going to come out the other direction, keeping my core engaged, keeping my hips level, not overextending my thigh so that uh, I go into extension in my low back. We don't want to do that. Holding for 10 seconds and coming back in. I'll have people do, um, on this one, I have them do three sets of five, five on each side, holding for 10 seconds. Good, coming in this way. Tell my patients to drive through their heel when they're here. Just like this, maintaining that core, not hyperextending in the low back, not bringing the leg up too high. This is not an exercise to see how high you can bring the leg up. It's can you move your arms and your legs separate from your core being engaged and maintaining stability. So those are four simple exercises that can help you stabilize the muscles around your SI joints to help provide stability in that region. There's another set, uh, if you look up here, from another person that I really respect on YouTube, Squat University, and uh, them going over McGill's Big Three. If you're looking for extra exercises to help stabilize your core, uh, these are some of the best. Stuart McGill is one of the world's leading spine researchers, and these are the three exercises that he says, uh, without a doubt, this is the foundation of creating a stable core. So you can check out this video up here. I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, comment down below. Let us know any questions you have or comments. We always love those. And subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that when other videos drop, you'll be the first to know. Until next time, take care. It's through, scratch those last two. Hi. <clears throat> what? <laughs>